Welcome to Pharmacology World. In this session, we're going to talk about adrenergic agonists and antagonists. I've put a small quote at the bottom that summarizes the function of the adrenergic nervous system, and that's fight or flight. The nervous system is composed of the central nervous system, which includes the brain and the spinal cord, and the peripheral nervous system, which includes the autonomic and somatic nervous systems. The autonomic nervous system innervates visceral organs, glands, and smooth muscle. It has peripheral ganglia, the neurons are not myelinated, and they form networks. Whereas the somatic nervous system primarily innervates skeletal muscle, the distal synapses are located in the cerebral spinal axis, somatic neurons are myelinated, and they do not form networks. In this session, we're going to focus in on drugs that target the sympathetic nervous system, which is a division of the autonomic nervous system. The endogenous adrenergic neurotransmitters that signal in the sympathetic nervous system include the catecholamines, such as epinephrine, norepinephrine, and dopamine. These catecholamines are produced in neurons through a sequential series of reactions, and they ultimately activate alpha, beta, or dopaminergic G-protein-coupled receptors. Drugs that activate adrenergic receptors are called sympathomimetics, and this is because they mimic the physiologic actions of endogenous catecholamines. On the other hand, drugs that inhibit adrenergic receptors are termed sympatholytics because they block the physiologic actions of endogenous catecholamines. So to help us visualize this process so we can better understand the targets of these agents, let's draw out the synthetic steps that are involved in the production of dopamine and norepinephrine. So let's look at an adrenergic neuron. The synthetic step starts out with the production of dopamine from tyrosine that's imported into the neuron through a transporter called the aromatic L-amino acid transporter. Tyrosine is then converted into L-dopa, or levodopa, and this is catalyzed by an enzyme called tyrosine hydroxylase. This is a key step. This is the rate limiting step of this reaction. L-DOPA is then converted into dopamine, and this is catalyzed by an enzyme called aromatic L-amino acid decarboxylase. The dopamine is then imported into vesicles where it's converted into norepinephrine in a reaction that's catalyzed by dopamine beta hydroxylase. These vesicles can then fuse with the presynaptic membrane and release norepinephrine. The norepinephrine can then bind to postsynaptic receptors, including alpha-1, beta-1, and beta-2. And as we'll see, alpha-1 is found primarily in the vasculature, beta-1 receptors are found in the cardiovascular system, and beta-2 receptors are found in the lungs. The norepinephrine that's released can also bind to presynaptic receptors. 
termed autoreceptors, and these were alpha-2. These alpha-2 receptors are coupled to inhibitory G-proteins that can inhibit the release of norepinephrine, so it's a negative feedback loop. And finally, the norepinephrine that's released can be reuptaken or re-internalized through the norepinephrine transporter, also known as NET. And this is the principal way that norepinephrine is recycled for future use. And this would include norepinephrine that's not used, that doesn't bind to a receptor, and also norepinephrine that binds to a receptor, but then falls off, and then it can be recaptured by the presynaptic neuron. And again, don't forget all the postsynaptic receptors that I showed here, alpha-1, beta-1, and beta-2, are also linked to G-proteins, but in these cases they're stimulatory or activating G-proteins, such as GS or GQ. One of the most important ways to gain an understanding of how adrenergic agonists and antagonists work is to understand where the adrenergic receptors are located in the body and what processes they control. For example, if we look at this chart, on the left-hand side we see specific target organs or effector organs, the physiologic response, and then the receptors that mediate these responses for both the sympathetic and the parasympathetic branches of the autonomic nervous system. In this session, we're concerned with the sympathetic branch. So we can see, for example, that alpha-1 receptors are located both in the eye and the vasculature. So understanding this allows us to understand that drugs that work against the alpha-1 receptor as an agonist or an antagonist are going to alter the contraction of the radial muscle in the eye or alter constriction of blood vessels. Beta-1 receptors, on the other hand, as I mentioned a moment ago, are located in the heart. You see there are beta-1 receptors located in the SA node, ectopic pacemakers. Beta-1 receptors also control contractility of the heart. Beta-2 receptors, on the other hand, also play a role in cardiovascular function, as well as controlling bronchial smooth muscle in the lung. Alpha and beta receptors also regulate the functions of the gastrointestinal tract, the genitourinary system, the skin, and various metabolic processes. And again, by understanding these receptors, where they're located, and what they control, we can understand that giving an agonist at these receptors would stimulate these functions or exaggerate these functions, whereas giving an antagonist would block these functions.